Do you sometimes forget what you wrote in a previous chapter of your story, like a character's eye color or hair color, or maybe something you said about their past? Or do you find yourself having to look back through previous chapters that you've written all the time to check what you wrote so that you don't accidentally change a detail (laughs) mid-plot? Or maybe you don't do this at all, but you've had times where readers have pointed out discontinuities to you, like, hey, in chapter three you said this, but in chapter six you said something completely different. Well, if you've ever experienced this, don't worry, every author deals with this at some point. If you haven't experienced it yet, honestly, you just haven't written enough books yet for it to happen, okay? Because when you're writing your first book, you're probably thinking, why would I forget that? Like, I love my characters. I love my story. I would never mess up the details like that. And on your first book, that actually may be true because it's your baby. It's what you're thinking about all the time. It's, you know, exciting. It's you're you're writing your first full-length novel, you know, so you you really may be able to keep all of the details straight. Uh, You know, maybe not, but a lot of us can. And I remember thinking that about my first book. Like, I couldn't imagine forgetting what my character looked like. You know, why do people do that? But if you're going to be a lifelong fiction writer, you're going to write a lot of stories. You're going to have a lot of characters, a lot of backstories. You know, you're just going to start forgetting the details. I know you may not be able to imagine that right now, but I promise it's going to happen if you write more than one book, okay? Not to mention, um, as you write more, your books are probably going to get longer. They're going to get more detailed. They're going to have bigger casts of characters. And that's just because you'll become more skilled at writing and want to write slightly more complicated stories. So you're going to have a hard time keeping the details straight, okay? That's not any kind of thing that you should be upset about or down on yourself about. It's a totally normal human problem to have. I mean, heck, most people forget their kids' names at some point, all right? So chances are, at some point, you're going to forget what eye color you assigned a particular character, okay? It's going to happen. It's just part of being human and part of being a fiction writer. However, it is a little bit of a problem because it does make your novel a little bit more difficult to write and it can drastically increase your production time or your turnaround time for writing a story if you're constantly having to look back through earlier chapters for details. Okay, I know I did this for probably my first several books. Anytime I needed something, I would have to go reread everything that I had written. And that's fine if you're only on chapter three and only have 10 pages to go through, but it can be really time consuming if you're three quarters of the way through your manuscript, right? So what do we do? How do we figure this out? How do we keep from, you know, taking an extra two months to get our story written because we keep having to do this? Well, in today's episode, I'm going to talk about the six parts of your story that you absolutely need to keep straight and continuous if you're going to write a successful and cohesive story. And I'm also going to talk about my number one hack for how to make sure that you don't lose track of these details ever again. So stay tuned. Hi there, aspiring fiction author. Welcome to Fiction Author Business School. Do you want to write your stories with ease and confidence? Do you find yourself Googling how to write a fiction book or how to write a character arc? Do you want to create a fiction empire, but you can't even finish the story you're currently working on, and you find yourself doubting it will even be good enough? Hi, I'm Liesl. I too have been writing stories since I was just a kid. I wanted to do something about my fiction writing dreams, but got information overload every time I looked for writing help, because there's just so much out there on the internet. I wanted confidence that I wouldn't disappoint my readers, and a plan to publish regularly. I knew the foundation of any author career, including the marketing aspect, is a stellar and well-written story, but I didn't know how to be sure that my story was solid. I went on a journey to figure out what really makes readers tick and how to incorporate those addictive elements into my story. In this podcast, you'll find specific tactical fiction writing tips, solutions to writing more words more efficiently, and secrets to mastering your author mindset. So put on your fuzzy slippers, grab a notebook and pen and some chocolate, and let's write some fiction. Okay, so like I said in the intro, I have definitely done this, uh, meaning lost track of the details of the manuscript that I'm working on. In fact, right now I'm working on the first book of Dragon Magic, and this is a story that I've been writing for years. It's one of those projects that was backburnered for a long time, and I would just do a chapter here, a chapter there. It's also got a lot of different point of view characters because it's an epic fantasy, and so sometimes I was writing those stories individually, and then when I tried to put them together, I realized that I had a lot of discontinuities, okay? So I've done everything with this particular manuscript from 
you know, simple things like having the character's eye color be blue in one chapter and green in another. But then I've also done more complicated things where I have a character in one place for one part of the story, and then all of a sudden they're in a different place. And I realize those two things are happening simultaneously, so obviously I can't keep them in both places. <laughs> That's a more complicated problem to have, right? I've even had something recently I realized where I had a chapter where I talked about how most of the people in this world were superstitious about naming the villain, which, you know, kind of a Voldemort thing where they don't want to say his name. But in other chapters, they talk about him very freely. So that's also something that I had to go back and decide what I wanted to do. It could work either way, but just make sure that it's continuous throughout the story and I'm not contradicting myself. All right. So in terms of having to go back through your story and reread your entire manuscript anytime you can't remember a detail, I probably don't have to convince many of you that this really piecemeal, unorganized method is not the most efficient way to write a story. I think you know that, you know, not terribly groundbreaking there. However, I'm sure that a lot of you would probably ask, okay, but how can I do it any differently? I mean, especially if I'm a pantser, I won't know those details. I'll be figuring them out as I write, and I really will have to go back through and smooth things out. Well, yeah, I mean, there's probably some truth to that, but here's the thing. What if you could come up with a system that cut down on that type of stuff by 90%? There's always going to be at least a few and maybe sometimes a lot of details that you won't figure out until you're in the trenches of your story and getting those wonderful light bulb moments that just really give you inspiration and take your story in a whole new direction that's good, that that makes it more powerful and more exciting, okay? You're not going to be able to get 100% away from that. But however you're doing it now, I promise it's possible to become more efficient at keeping track of the details of your story. So how do we do that? Well, I'm sure most of you are probably aware of the concept of a character Bible. If you aren't, it's just something that authors create to keep track of the details of their characters. So most often it's used to keep track of physical traits. You know, this is like the most surface level thing that we're talking about here. What a character looks like, maybe where they're from, some of their backstory, how they dress, what scars they may have. Okay, that's why it's called a character Bible. It's a reference and it will have all the details of your character so that if you forget them, you can just go back and check that character Bible and then you have that reference on hand so that you're not combing back through chapters and chapters that you've already written trying to remember what color you said this character's hair was, right? So I am a big proponent of creating a reference like this for your writing, for your work in progress, right? But what I teach is called an expanded story Bible. Because while character traits, like physical traits, I mean, are important, I think there's a lot more than that that needs to go into your Bible. Okay, so it's not just a character Bible, it's a story Bible. And there are six main things that you need to put in there and reference throughout the writing of your story. Um, I'm going to tell you what they are, but this is what I mean when I say even if things change, this is still more efficient to have a reference like this because you can change the story Bible. It is not set in stone. Even if you start out with something, if you get a light bulb moment, if you're pantsing and you decide, oh, I'm going to do this, you can still put that in the story Bible. And yes, you're going to have to go back and pepper it through the beginning part of the story or change something if you've you know, decided to do something different. As I said, there's, that's just part of being a writer. There's not going to be a way that you can 100% get away from that. But This will also keep it in a reference so that you always have something on hand, whether it's in a notebook, in a journal, you know, maybe in a a separate file on your computer, wherever you want to keep it, however you do things, you can always go back and reference it. And that is always, always going to be faster than having to comb through, you know, 50,000 words that you've already written in the hopes that you'll find that one detail that you've forgotten, right? So um, what do we need to put then in our character Bibles? Well, the truth is you can put anything in them. It just depends on you a lot, what you might forget. You know, you know yourself pretty well. And as you write more and more books, you'll become familiar with the things that you need to put in there because you'll start to realize what you are always going back to, to reference when you're writing your story, right? But I have come up with six things that I think are really, really essential, whether you're a plotter or a pantser, to keep in your Bible, not only because it will help you remember, you know, and be a reference so that you're not contradicting yourself as you write, but it will also help keep your story on the rails. And what I mean by that is if you come to a scene and you're not sure how 
important it is, if this is a crucial scene or something that can be cut, if you're not sure exactly where you're going with the scene or how it's going to tie into the main story, you can keep certain things in your expanded story Bible that will help you focus and keep things on the rails so that you can go back and read them and then immediately know how you need to fix that scene or you know where you're going with this particular character arc. So let's talk about what those are. Uh, if you want to write them down, grab a paper and pen. And this is what I personally keep in my story Bible when I'm writing a new story. Um, physical description. Now, we've already talked about this for the characters, but another really good thing to keep in the Bible is physical description of your world, especially if you're dealing with any kind of fantasy world, um, with any kind of, you know, distinct description of something, whether it be a place, a natural feature, like a geographical feature, of course, your characters and what they look like. And it's really important to keep these descriptions, not only so that the concept is the same, meaning, um, you know, you're describing like the hair color or the color of the walls in a room the same way, but I believe that one really good thing to do is to use the actual description, come up with a half-line description of something and use it over and over again in your book. Now, you might say, wait a minute, but that's repetitive. Don't we want to describe it differently? Well, sometimes, yeah. I mean, you don't want to use that same phrase 30 times in the same chapter, certainly, but especially if they're not seeing this place or this person every single chapter, it's not a bad thing to use the exact same words or, you know, maybe they don't need to be in the exact same order, so same words, different order, mix them up a little bit, to describe your character or your place, okay? I mean, a really good example of this, let's look at Harry Potter. J.K. Rowling always describes him as a skinny English kid with dark hair that's always messy, and, you know, he's got his glasses and, of course, his scar, but she uses the same words all the time. She doesn't take a thesaurus to that definition and change it because she knows that if she uses the same words all the time, we'll become very familiar with that and we'll instantly recognize Harry when we hear that description, okay? So it's actually, I've talked about repetition before, it's actually really important to really ingrain something in your reader's mind by repeating it. So again, the physical descriptions can be anything that's distinctive in your story, meaning characters, places, architecture, um, geographical features, but it's not just the concept of them that you need to keep straight. Write down some words and phrases that you're going to use throughout your novel or throughout your series to describe that same thing. That will make it very distinctive in the reader's mind, and then you can always go back to that instead of saying, okay, wait, how did I describe that before? I want to use the same phrase. No, you've already got it in a reference, okay? So it's going to take you two seconds to look it up instead of six hours reading through previous chapters, okay? The second thing that I always keep in my story Bible, and this is specifically for characters, are emotional reactions. This is something that I've taught in my courses before. If you really want your characters to be distinctive and jump out, you know, jump out from the page and really feel very real and characterize them on a deep level, then they should have some sort of emotional reaction based on what that emotion is. So what I mean is write out the basic human emotions, okay? You're going to have happy, sad, angry, fearful, you know, maybe one or two others. And how does your character show that emotion? come up with a physical reaction that will help them show that emotion. Now, it doesn't have to be groundbreaking. Most people show anger in one of about five ways, okay? So you can use just normal ways that humans show reactions to the emotions they're having. And every once in a while, maybe you can do something really distinctive for that character. But write down what those emotional cues are in your story Bible. And then before you go to write a scene, you can ask yourself, how is this character feeling? Or how will their emotions change in the scene so that you can have them show emotion the same way all the time. Now, that's subtle enough that not all readers are going to pick up on it consciously, but they will pick up on it unconsciously. And if done really, really well, and you have kind of a long-running character, such as for a long-running series, it will get to a point where they know that character so well, they will know exactly how that character is going to react when a certain emotion crops up. And that really helps to bond them to that character. It makes the character feel very real because, again, it's a form of repetition, okay? And human beings latch on to repetition. That is how they come to really love your character characters because, yeah, believe it or not, they're a little bit predictable, but that makes it so that the readers can feel very close to them, very bonded to them, and be very invested in what's happening to them, okay? So I keep those emotional reactions in my character Bibles so that I can go back and make sure that I'm always having the character show emotion the same way unless, you know, that's part of their transformation or something, and then the character just feels way more cohesive and 
it just yeah it just helps the reader a lot to latch onto that character um, similarly I also keep personality type in the character Bible I'm someone who thinks you ought to pick a personality for your character there's lots of different personality systems out there there's um, some that only have three or four types like uh, Gretchen Rubin's The Four Tendencies or The Color Code. And then, of course, you can go into things that are more detailed like the Enneagram or Myers-Briggs. And I'm not saying you need to come up with some really detailed 30-pronged personality for your characters. No, that's going to be way too complicated. Just pick one or two traits that your character has, you know, for how they react to their world and make sure that you stick to that. So again, in any given scene, you can go look at your story Bible, say, okay, my character is an Enneagram 4, so how would they react to this situation? And that way, again, it just helps the character really jump off the page, really feel very real, to have very realistic reactions to things. But if you have a lot of characters, you might forget what their personality type is, or you might even say, okay, well, I know they're an Enneagram 5, but I can't remember exactly what all the traits of an Enneagram 5 are. So you go back to your Bible and you say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, deal I'm specifically going to put in this trait, this trait, and this trait for this character, which means in this situation, this is probably how they would react. Okay, again, it just helps you to tell your story from a deeper, more realistic place and make your characters feel more real and more three-dimensional. But again, that's a detail you want to keep on hand for reference so that you're not changing them from an Enneagram 3 to an Enneagram 4 from scene to scene, right? Okay. Um, character indicators. This is kind of a small thing, and I usually put it in my story Bible early on because it's, it's the very beginning part of a story. These indicators are just the things that you are going to show your characters doing or being in the very beginning parts of your story that lets the audience know what kind of person they are. So... Um, if you have a good character, you generally see them doing something good at the beginning of the story. You know, something that's going to let the audience know that this is just a normal person and they're basically good, even if they're flawed, you know. So maybe it's that they have a dog or they go home and play ball with their kids. You know, they're just a normal Joe and they have a family who they love, they're, you, you, that sort of thing. Uh, on the flip side, with a villain, it's going to be a very different sort of character indicator. You can have something like Darth Vader choking somebody, the evil music behind him, right? Or even just, you know, if some guy's walking home from work and he kicks a dog, well, you know that this is a character you're not supposed to like, right? And this is at the very beginning. This is the way that we introduce our audience to these characters. So I always put the character indicators in there before I get started. Um, obviously, those don't have to reach all the way through your story, but they are a good thing to keep in mind and operate off of as you move through the story because maybe you start with negative character indicators because this character is not likable but you're going to show him or her go through a transformation you know or on the other side you can bring these character indicators in later in the story to make it feel really cohesive so it's just a good thing to have down as reference okay now we're going to get into the final two number five and six which are a little bit more complicated the first is backstory relating to your plot now we all know that in terms of the character transformation, you're probably going to end up using backstory in order to explain why a character is the way they are, why they believe what they do, why they're doing what they do. This is especially true of villains, but it's true of all characters. You know, your character is going to have a misguided belief. They're going to have a flaw. We need to understand where that came from and why they believe that thing. Um, so I really strongly believe that you need to keep backstory related to your plot, to your character, to their transformation in your story Bible. Why? Even though those are more plot-based things, whereas most people use a story Bible to reference, again, things like descriptions and one-line, you know, details about things, I actually really think that you need to keep backstory relating to, to your plot in your story Bible because not only do you not want to forget it, but it's something that I think you should reread very, very often while you're writing your story. Again, it just keeps your story on the rails. It keeps you, you know, really sticking very closely to the same theme. And sometimes, you know, we all know we can get excited about characters, we can get excited about a scene, and we might 
kind of go off the rails with it and go, oh, well, what if they did this? And what if they did that? And then what if they reacted this way? And that's, it's not necessarily a bad thing. If it's something that serves your story and you want to incorporate, then go for it. But you can also really get pretty far away from the story you were originally telling that way. But if before you sit down to write any given scene, you go back through and read the backstory relating to your plot, you will always have it front of mind and you will be able to keep yourself, you know, pretty tightly, um, bound to what your character believes, to what their backstory has created in them in the present. And it's just a way of making sure that you're staying on track, making sure that you're not, you know, going off into la la land with this character and completely forgetting what you originally were trying to, you know, tell about them in the story. So I would really, really strongly recommend that you keep backstory relating to your plot in your character or your story Bible, excuse me. Um, and the final thing is any details of your character's transformation. Now, this kind of goes hand in hand with number five, but this is stuff other than backstory, okay? Just any details, um, you know, how they're going to start to transform, um, how, you know, this their misguided belief is going to be challenged, and then what they're going to believe when this happens, and then how it's going to shift when that happens. And, um, you know, if you can possibly plan out how they're going to transform in the final, you know, scene right around the climactic moment. Again, it's the same thing. It just keeps you on track so that you know that everything you're writing is pointed toward those events, is leading toward those events. And that way, again, if you ever come to a point where you're like, oh, the scene is just getting away from me and I don't know where I'm going with it and I'm feeling like it's all over the place, then you can go back and read these things in your story Bible and I promise it will help you fix that scene really quickly. It will help you get on track because these things that you are writing in your story Bible are kind of the core of your story and they are almost like a like a blueprint to follow. So I don't mean a blueprint in terms of the plot. If you want to pants your plot, by all means, do that. But it will, while you're pantsing that plot, it will help you stay, I don't know how else to say it, stay on track so that you're keeping the themes the same no matter what happens in the story. And a lot of times this is what comes across in character uh, internal dialogue, right? So no matter what's going on, if you're constantly having them think about things related to, you know, their misguided belief and what their transformation is going to be and what their backstory is and who they are at their core, then you're never going to really get off track with that character, no matter what happens in your plot. Okay. So these are the six things that I want you to keep in your character Bible, if you possibly can. And you know, you might be saying, yeah, but I'm a pantser. Sometimes I don't know half of that when I get started. That's okay. Still keep your character or your story Bible with you. And as you learn these things, you're going to write them down in there. Because if you're a pantser, you're going to have to go back from the beginning and make sure that you're putting all of this stuff in. So you don't want to figure something out in chapter 22 out of 30, and then go back to the beginning, start putting things in to make your story more, more cohesive and get to that chapter again and realize you didn't put that in from the beginning. Okay, I got to start over and go back and put that in again. Okay, so you can write these things down as you go, write them down as you discover them, and then you'll still have that as a reference. Okay, now, like I said, especially if you're a hardcore pantser, you're not going to get away from having to go back through your story and put these important things in, but having them as a reference will still make it faster and more efficient than if you're just reading through all of your chapters over and over again, hoping that you hit all the details, right? That's just not a very organized or efficient way to do things. So keep them in a reference, keep a story Bible. And these are just the six things that I think are most important. It, you know, once you start going through, you will probably come up with things that you forgot to write down and then we're kicking yourself for later that will be unique to you as a writer. So you will figure out the things that you need to put in your story Bible and then that will make it easier for you and your unique way that you write, okay? So um, the only other thing I was gonna talk about was how to do this, but I've, I've pretty much covered it, you know, kind of by default. If you are a plotter, more like I am, I create as much of my story Bible as I can from the beginning so that I constantly have it as a reference. And that's just because I'm somebody who cannot stand to waste time. This is why I'm not a pantser because it would drive me nuts to have to write 20,000 words and throw them out. But pantsers do that a lot. You know, it just depends on your personality and how you write. For me, I do as much of my story Bible as I can in the beginning because I feel like it cuts out that wasted extra time of having to go back through my story looking for all these details, okay? Now, that's not to say that my story Bible, some of the details in it don't change. Just like anyone else, even though I'm a plotter, I can have those light bulb moments that take me in a different direction and then I might change some things, but that's okay. When I do, I just change them in my story Bible and I'll notate and say, okay, I changed this detail starting with chapter six, which means I need to go back through one through five and put this detail in. And that way, once I'm done writing, I have the detail 
details of all of the edits that I need to make, okay, rather than just reading through and hoping that I catch any discontinuities. You see the difference? You see how much more effective that's going to be and how much more quickly you're going to get through your editing and your production of the book in general, okay? And of course, if you're a pantser, you're going to probably be doing it much differently than that. You're going to be creating your story Bible as you're creating your story. But it's really actually kind of fun to go through and see the evolution of your story written out in your story Bible. Okay, first I was going here with the character, but then I realized this, so then I kind of changed course. And then I didn't realize until this chapter that this was going to be a major theme. You know, I mean, you can actually sort of almost see a, a, a timeline of the way that your story evolved. And that's just kind of fun, but it also, even if you're a pantser, is going to help you figure out your edits a lot more quickly. All right. So let's um, go ahead and recap here. The six things that I want you to keep are physical descriptions, not only of characters, but of places, geographical features, cities, you know, just going to depend, you know, somebody's office. I mean, if you're writing something more contemporary, just any anything that you're going to need to describe more than once and that the reader is going to need to envision, keep physical descriptions of that in your story Bible. Number two, emotional reactions and cues so that you're um, always using the same types of reactions for your characters based on the emotion, and that will help characterize them very, very distinctively in your reader's mind. Number three, personality type, same kind of thing. Make sure that they are reacting to a situation in a way that is realistic for their personality. And again, that just makes them more real, more realistic to the, to the reader. Uh, four is character indicators, how you're going to introduce them to the audience, you know, based on whether they're generally a good person or generally more of a villain. That's something you can reference throughout your story and maybe even throughout your character transformation. Um, and five, backstory relating to your plot, not only so that you don't forget what it is, but so that you can constantly reference that and sort of keep your, your character on the rails and not uh, move away from the original story you were trying to tell. And number six, any details of your character's transformation for the same reason. Um, these are going to be more in the present, so not so much backstory, but just you know how your character is changing over time and the, the path that's leading to that final transformation. Again, just to make sure that your story is cohesive, that you're not going way off the rails and sending them into a completely different direction than the story you were originally trying to tell, and you're just keeping your story very tight and very cohesive. All right, and then of course, the, you know, those are the six I came up with. The seventh would be anything that you need for your unique writing style to put in your character Bible in order to make the writing and the editing easier for you, okay? You can put as many things as you want in your story Bible, and it's, the rest are gonna be just dependent on you and unique to you and the, what you need to make it easier for you, okay? so. Your homework is this. I would love it if you would go home and maybe try to write out these six things in a story Bible. Um, again, you can do it in a notebook, you can do it in a journal, you can just type it out on your computer in a separate file, it's totally up to you. But see how much of this you already have and keep a reference somewhere while you're writing. Now, if you're a plotter, or I mean a pantser, excuse me, and you don't have all these things, that's fine. Create the Bible and with you know, maybe pages or spaces for these things, and then you can just fill them in as you go. And I would love, even though I know this is not something you can do right after listening to this episode or anything, I would love to hear how this helped you or if it helped you. Uh, did it help you edit more quickly and efficiently? Did it help you move through your story with more confidence because you, you had these things front of mind and you weren't always hoping you wouldn't forget them or guessing? You know, I, I would love to hear how doing something like this has changed the way that you write your story or if it did so um, that could be several weeks or several months in the making and that's fine but i would love to hear about it if you um, find any kind of value in doing this uh, what we've talked about today okay and as always if you need more help with this if you would like my eyeballs on your story if you would like me to help you hash anything out from your plot to your characters to your major overarching themes uh world building anything like that um, go to bit.ly forward slash story theme and sign up for a session of master storyteller coaching i would love to help you get your work in progress finished and you know so you're really happy with it and get it out to the masses finally right all right so thank you so much for listening today that's pretty much all i have everyone have a wonderful week of writing and storytelling and i'll see you back here next week same time same place bye thanks so much for listening today before you go would you be willing to do me a solid if you found any value at all in this episode today, would you be willing to share it with other authors just like you in the hopes that they might find some value in it as well? Happy story crafting this week. Remember, only you can bring the world the unique story that you are trying to tell. 
Only you can succeed in your own unique way in getting it out of your mind and your heart and into a medium where it can reach thousands, if not millions, of salivating readers. You don't have to worry about failure because there is always a market for awesome. 